To me, running is actually the easiest sports to do to keep myself in shape because I can do it anywhere, anytime and at my own pace. However, I've also heard about some myth about running. So I'll be asking Dr. Brian Tracy about the myth, whether they are true or they are just some sayings. And on top of that, I'll be asking him to help me find a perfect pair of running shoes for my legs and what are some of the common injuries that joggers always face. Let's go! So we have Dr. Brian with us right now and he's here to help me address some of the myth that I've been hearing. So doctor, I was told that if I run too much, I will need to replace my knee in the later part of my life. Is that true? Okay, that's a very good observation and uh, uh, you're right, there's a lot of myths and mm. very improper information whether it's about nutrition or conditioning or in uh, sports medicine. Mm. Uh, I've been in sports medicine for four decades now. Oh. Uh, I've got a little bit more work to do, but <laughs> I, in my 60s I try to practice what I preach. Yes, and unfortunately if you go to a mainstream with good intentions, mm. a regular trained medical doctor, I'm a specialist in sports medicine and I'm also a podiatric specialist, which okay. means uh, when I came here, they said, uh, wow, you're going to do really well because you're a food specialist. I said, no, I'm a foot specialist. And I was trained in general orthopedics first, mm. uh, means the whole body. Mm. Uh, actually, I did kinesiology, biomechanics, this is how the body generates motion. Mm. Uh, and that makes us prevent injuries, yes. which is very important. And of course, I uh, spent 15 years of our Canadian Olympic teams and we optimize performance to make mm. sure you can win those medals uh, and uh, you know, bring it home to the kids. Uh, and then I specialized actually in my late 20s uh, when I suffered from foot problems. Oh. And we came to realize that the foot doesn't just exist in isolation. In the same manner that a building has a foundation, mm -hmm. and obviously we only think of a building as static, that it's a big, you know, level platform. Well, the human foot moves okay. and it has a certain amount of movement, very simply, and it better not exceed that. And there, uh, in the 1970s, there was the running craze where people said, well, one really good running shoe, cool, that's it. You know, I don't even necessarily need to, to spend a lot of money on a gym. I can just go on a shoe and go out anywhere, whether I'm traveling or whether I'm at home. And there you go. That's your instant fitness. Uh, and people started developing runner's knee. And Dr. Jim Fix was one of the early sort of proponents of the running craze. Uh, and then all kinds of people started getting knee problems. And actually children knew a very important thing in what we call biomechanics, which yes. is the interrelationship of the human body. And children have a rhyme in the Western world that the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone and the ankle bone's connected to the knee bone. And what it means, if the foot's in a good position, mm. then it aligns your ankle, your knee, hip, and even your back. Okay. And with the Singapore School Ser Health Services here, I came to teach them that even though over half of all scoliosis was a result of a difference between your two feet. Oh. Yeah, because the human body has two independent foundations, swapien, yupien, kirikanan, left, right, right? And if there's a difference between those two, then you get secondary pelvic imbalances. But as one of our famous golfers here, Martin Mamet, um, he went to three professors of orthopedic surgery, mm. and you must understand the bias and the training of mm. a physician, of a orthopedic surgeon is that if it's broken then they have to do Humpty Dumpty and put it back together and they're not necessarily trained in causation mm -hmm. and at just in his early 40s he said my knees are killing me and as a professional golfer they do turn and twist mm -hmm. but he ran as well for his health and he said my knees are killing me I can't bend my knees anymore and so he had pain so they prescribe an analgesic painkiller he had inflammation, that the kneecap was kind of grinding and crunching and wearing away. And so, a proper intended, because thou shalt do no harm. Okay. Okay, that's the first rule. But you also do not want to uh, omit a necessary act. And that means something you know that you should be doing. But he had inflammation, and they gave him what? Anti-inflammatories. Okay. And you cannot ad infinitum forever keep taking symptomatic medications. Uh, it'll cause a lot of side effects and it caused him you know, significant gastrointestinal distress. It burned out his stomach. Mm. Uh, and then uh, very popular uh, joint supplements, joint guard, you know, condomalacia, patella, means your kneecap mm. isn't tracking well. A lot of people don't understand it. And they take very expensive supplements every month. Uh, glucosamine sulfate is a very popular one. And all those are Band-Aids. And I do not deal in Band-Aids. I look to eliminate proper causation. Mm. And if we have proper foot function and proper running shoes, then we clean up the secondary alignment of the ankle, the knee, the hip, and the back. Okay. So children knew the foot bones connected to the ankle bone, and what I taught Martin, I said, look, if your foot's rotated into an excessive inward rotation, which about 70% of Asian people, much, much higher incidence compares to a Caucasian population, 
when I came here 20 years ago uh, for most of our military, over half of the boys got completely flat feet. What's wrong with that? Is there any problem with having flat tires on your car or flat bicycle, uh, flat tires on your bicycle? Right. Yeah. You don't handle very well and you don't get good, you know, mileage. <laughs> and then I heard that it would be quite painful if you work for long hours, right? Oh, if you do anything, yeah. because one of the primary functions of the human foot is that our arches, there's actually four in each foot, mm. act like a suspension system. Okay, oh. if you look at the main arch, I've got a foot over here, a nice skeleton if you want, but it acts like a suspension system. And even a lot of children sound like they're Barney the Dinosaur. They sound like they're very heavy on their feet because their foot is coming down, slapping the ground mm. and transferring. An average person, uh, without training, running, all the people who come in to see Jeffrey, uh, an average person will train 20, 30 miles a week, or some elite runners do 300 kilometers a week. That's a lot. Yeah, and they don't wear their knees out because the same way as an automobile, if you're going to go to a proper mechanic, mm. you make sure your alignment is right, right? Okay. Your tires aren't wearing away unevenly or your suspension system isn't going uh, you know, really out of, out of alignment that way. And it's the same with the human foot. So why I had the joy of starting working with uh, really good uh, sports companies, and we do not take uh, any kickbacks or any recomp re recompense, but that it's a necessary adjunct for orthopedic specialists or sports medicine specialists that mm. we do all of our magic. And we have got really cool braces that go inside the shoes that are a restorative appliance. That works like eyeglasses. You put them on and it works. But they must go into proper footwear. Okay. And one of the elements that we found was that there was so much misinformation. And people think, uh, oh, here we go. It's all right. Barefoot running. Well, if you are a 38 kilogram, and you know, this is a cool thing, it was actually like a reef runner to stop nicks or cuts or abrasions, mm -hmm. same way as our ancestors did 40,000 years ago. Right? They had an animal skin to wrap around, um, and they walked on natural terrain. Mm -hmm. um, will you mind telling me what kind of surface that you're on right now? <laughs> it's tile. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that humans evolved for 40,000 or 400,000 years on no, hard, unnatural. Probably no. soy, something softer. Kempong, mm. utan, utan, <laughs> jungle. <laughs> Sorry, very Singaporean. Mm. <laughs> if foreigners won't understand this. Natural terrain. Natural terrain is soft yielding. You ever walk on nice grass? Isn't it beautiful? Mm. It feels comfortable. That's Congratulations. That's what your human foot is designed mm. for. Or the beach, or natural yielding surfaces. Not granite, not stone, not concrete. The human oh. foot is not designed for that. So that's why in elite running shoes, which must be not just properly sized, but chosen for the correct features of everyone's foot from the proper fitting, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't even know, like in certain good companies, um, I'm going to say them, New Balance and Asics are predominantly known, that two individuals might have the same length of foot, but maybe your boyfriend, lucky guy, has a forefoot that wide, okay. and maybe he's a size 9 or a size 42. And another individual can have the same length of foot, but their foot's that wide. Mm. So you need a shoe with length and width configurations. And then specific, um, ASICs have got 400 shoes in their company. And you have to know how to apply the technology to that individual. And when I come into Jeffrey, if I send my patients into Jeffrey, mm. which I've dealt yes. with nothing professionally for 20 years for a good reason, product knowledge and customer service. And when they come in and they say, hi, I'd like a running shoe. Jeffrey will say, or I will ask my patients, that's really nice. I'm really glad that you'd like a running shoe. Would you like an on-road running shoe? Would you like an off-road running shoe? Do you run just on a treadmill in a gym? Which I dissuaded our national service because it's not a good conditioning protocol to run an air conditioning on a treadmill if you have to have battle-ready soldiers. Okay. Right? So a uh, treadmill, do you have a wide foot? Do you have a narrow foot? Do you wear medical inserts? Uh, there's about 10 questions that we'll ask if you say running shoe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a lot of different parameters in the knowledge base of what, you know, and unfortunately when you come into a lot of regular shops uh, in Asia, if you go to Germany or Vancouver or Sydney, the staff and the personnel have to be trained. That at least they'll spend a workshop with someone like me and when they come in and they go, well, you know, can you please tell me in this vast array of all of these shoes on the wall, What's the difference between that shoe and that shoe and that shoe? And unfortunately, not picking on Singapore, but a lot of in the ASEAN region, the clerks are not trained. Mm. And they will say, well, that one's orange and that one's green and that one's yellow. And they do not understand the complex technology of where we have to strike a balance between providing a certain amount of cushioning, not too much, mama bear, papa bear, baby bear, okay, okay. middle road. Uh, and then a very tremendously misunderstood word called support in shoes. They go, 
what's supporting you? Well, okay, noodles are good to eat, but no good for your feet. There's no support in that. It's just mm. like a wet noodle, and that's meant to walk on the beach and do nothing else to stop nicks or cuts. So proper footwear have uh, an implication about not just at least optimizing the foot mm. function and therefore help prevent a lot of knee injuries because Jeffrey will tell you that there's a lot of motion control running shoes. And before you go see, you know, if you go in to see an orthopedic surgeon, it's $300 for a 10-minute consultation. And you tell him, my knees are hurting. Yeah. Golly gosh. Uh, and he will look, well, have you fallen down, you know, uh, and actually impacted your knee from a motorcycle or a bicycle? Were you playing soccer or from Canada, we ski and you get a lot of knee injuries from torsion and twisting. Uh, and 70% of Singaporeans have non-specific knee pain. It means they haven't had any direct trauma that they can remember that they whacked it or injured it. And they're going, I don't understand. Why are my knees hurting them? And again, it comes down to if you have a foot imbalance, it affects by direct biomechanics. It's called a closed kinematic chain, or means if your foot's out of position, then your ankle and your knee go out of position. And if I stood up and I rotate my foot to the inside, then my knee's over here, and it's supposed to be there, and it grinds and wears away. And the articular cartilage, a very, very super wonderful, incredible special surface underneath the kneecap, mm. articular cartilage, is about a thousand times more slippery than the world's best Formula One engine automobile oil. We have the F1 coming up in uh, September, right? And those engines are running at 10,000 RPM. Well, congratulations. Uh, an individual, normally, you have any friends who wear Fitbits? We have a lot in the company. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, staying fit. Uh, an average person takes 10,000 steps a day. Okay. Yeah, and think about that. You ever gone into a gym? You look like a pretty fit, fit, fit young lady. I do run, but not on a very regular basis. Okay. On days where I feel slightly moody, where I need a run to refresh myself, or if I feel fat that week. Okay, yeah. exercise is very Correct. good rather than starving yourself. Mm. But where I'm going with that is, have you ever tried to lift your body weight? You know no. how strong? Uh, I was three years with our Canadian Olympic weightlifting team for the 1988 uh, mm. Olympics in Seoul. And you have to be an incredibly strong individual to lift your body weight, to bench like press. I'm 108 kilos, right? I'm down to 240. I used to be 285. Yeah. And to lift your body weight, you better be a really strong person to bench press or squat or lift your body weight. And yet, how come your foot can do that 10,000 times a day? Or if you run, you land with three to four times your body weight every stride you take. If you jump, you play basketball. Jeffrey's got basketball shoes here. You land with up to eight times your body weight. We did uh, tests. I took care of the Singapore Slingers for a while, pro ball teams. And a 100 kilogram man will land with 800 kilograms of force on his foot. So proper footwear can help protect that, but also uh, it also can cause a lot of knee injuries, okay? But no, an individual, uh, I used to send some of my patients in here who ran, uh, some of them uh, in an 11 day race, 1,000 kilometers. That's two marathons a day, every day. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, in his 40s and 50s. And you can, the human body is designed to go and go and go if it's properly tuned and properly aligned. So a really good start is proper footwear. And not just colorful, you know, when you go, I used to take care of a number and consult to a number of our big gyms, who I won't mention. Uh, but all the dude or dudette standing in front of the mirrors going <laughs> like that, looking good. Nothing wrong with looking good. It's very important for a good self-esteem, right? And to be a good uh, health. But uh, not at the expense of your health when you're just looking at aesthetics for footwear. Correct. And that's what a lot of people do, is they choose a shoe that, oh, I have to have a purple one or a green one to go with my latest outfit that way. It better have proper fitting and proper technical features. And you need an individual like Jeffrey uh, who will, and literally, and there's so many stores in town here uh, and in the region, and very, very few of them have any deep product knowledge mm -hmm. to help protect you, because by the time you start going seeing sports medicine specialists, boy, your bills can add up. So we say that the human body has give and take, or what we call compensation patterns. And it gives and gives and gives, and it's got sort of adaptive capabilities, and then a person starts, you know, getting minor pain and discomfort, and then they say, well, I don't know why I'm trying to get healthy. I'm trying to run or I'm doing power walking or I'm going to the gym. I'm doing cross training, different sports, but I'm starting to sustain injuries and they don't understand why. And this is where chronic injuries come in. Mm -hmm. An acute injury is if you fall and twist your ankle. But a chronic injury, in the majority of people with very good intentions for their health, 
start to try staying active. But if they, it's like taking a car, that again, uh, we use the analogy about an automobile. If it's improperly aligned or you haven't changed your oil <laughs> or your suspension needs a retuning, uh, the car is not gonna drive well. And if you try to drive uh, across the country, so I'm from Canada, and you can drive 8,000 kilometers, and you're not gonna make it very far unless your car is properly tuned. Mm -hmm. So that's where proper knowledge about getting away from the myths about footwear and the myths of training that needs to be properly addressed. So a lot of good uh, general practitioners and family medical groups will work in concert with them. I do a lot of workshops for general practitioners and with orthopedic surgeons, because again, they have a very different bias. And we want them to be able to screen effectively so that an individual comes in. Uh, one of the mind, body, and soul talks I did, uh, Andre de la Cruz, she lost her kidney because she took medication, right? that then caused a very serious problem mm. on weight loss instead of looking at healthy, sustainable modification of lifestyle. Eat sensibly and exercise sensibly. And you know, with all of our beautiful food, I think in Singapore and the region, we have some of the world's best food. You know, yeah. like we got an incredible array of cultures and that. But you need to maintain healthy, active lifestyle. And if your feet don't work well, then you're not going to stay active, mm. right? And swimming, you know, Joseph Schooling, fantastic, congratulations. but. Uh, swimming doesn't achieve one very important factor for our Asian population. Uh, with absolutely no disrespect, have you noticed the precedence and the incredible prevalence, sorry, of black people, of Negroes, in sports? Okay? Look at NFL, basketball, baseball, athletics, running, jumping. The blacks dominate almost mm. every sport in the world because they are genetically incredibly built. Uh, not just their muscle fiber type. But your bones, young lady, you are a very beautiful Asian lady, but you suffer from one genetic thing that we cannot change. And the black people, you'll notice, do you see any black people in the, in the pools swimming at elite levels? Zero. Come to think of it, I really don't see any. There's none. Yeah. Because if you understand the difference between a bar of steel and the apparent same bar of aluminum, they look the same size, they're both made of metal, but the steel is much denser. Correct. Well, congratulations, black people can support all the massive muscularity, which they do have a genetic difference, but they can support that muscularity because their bones are up to 30 to 40% denser and stronger than yours. It's not the frame size, it's how strong their bones are. And so this is why we need Asians to be doing weight-bearing activities, mm. health walking, jogging, running, badminton, recreational sports weight-bearing activities. So swimming does not achieve that objective because you're weightless, okay? And it's really nice. It's a cool environment to exercise in, and you can be barefoot. And actually, Ang Peng Xion, one of our top swimming coaches, I used to send them all the really, really flat-footed people because they got flippers like a duck. <laughs> and they can actually swim really well, but they're not very good at walking or running, okay? So that's why uh, for Asians, it's really important to be doing health walking jogging or running or recreational okay. sports to maintain. If you don't use it, you lose it, okay? So if you're at a genetic predisposition, a very, very low bone density as an Asian, mm. and then so there's uh, Negroes and Caucasians and Asians, and then men and women. So Asian women genetically are at the bottom of the totem pole. Then you have to make sure basic good quality calcium in your diet, and you can look at a nutritional website or consult a nutritionist, uh, and then good reasonable weight-bearing activities. And a little bit of sunshine, by the way. 